Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, we are going to talk about how to perform knee arthrocentesis and injections when I use that ultrasound guidance. Now, with regards to equipment, you're obviously going to need your ultrasound machine. You're going to need your intradermal anesthetic to numb the skin. Now, I do recommend doing this sterile. So I use a sterile transducer cover, sterile towels to kind of drape the area, sterile gloves, and then your aspiration slash injection needle and syringe. With regards to the probes of choice, generally your linear transducer over here on the right is going to be your probe of choice. But if you have an aspiration or an injection where you're having to go a bit deeper than around four to five centimeters, the curvilinear transducer is going to give you a bit more of a depth to be able to reach that. Now you definitely can use just your intradermal injection needle, but sometimes you need a bit of a longer needle. And if that happens, I recommend using your spinal needle with of course that inner stylet removed. With regards to the location where you're gonna do this procedure, I generally go in the supra patellar area. And this is of course, assuming that you've already diagnosed your effusion, if you are going to do an aspiration or the location at which you're going to do your injection, if that's what you're going to do. Now, after you've identified the biggest pocket, if you're going to do an aspiration, go ahead and turn your transducer in the transverse orientation relative to the knee. And then you're going to approach with the needle in the lateral to medial orientation, just like you see here. Now, having adequate line of sight with the ultrasound screen is important to make sure that you have good needle tip visualization and often that can require positioning the machine either at the feet like you see here or on the other side of the patient so you can just see directly at your needle and then just look up and then see the screen over here so this is ideal i'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the core ultrasound.com website that is ultrasound podcast five minutes so ultrasound of the week clip bank and we also have our courses page where we have the core ultrasound fundamentals and core ultrasound question bank where you have 3200 questions with feedback including narrated videos explaining the question check it out and back to your video here is an example of of performing this technique in the long axis of the transducer with the short axis of the probe. Now, a couple of things, I'm using a very small uh, intradermal needle here. And you can see here, I went a little too inferiorly. So I'm having to angle it up a bit to get to that relatively small pocket. This is evaluation of a septic joint here. And you can see here that it's a bit curvy here. Um, since doing this one and recording this arthrocentesis, I actually have started using almost invariably spinal needles um, of at least 20 gauge so that you have a little more direction, a little easier to see where your needle is. And you can see here that as I am repositioning, I am doing a lot of relocation of this transducer, meaning I'm not keeping it steady on the knee. I actually keep moving it around to try and uh, make sure that I keep a good view on that needle tip. Now here is a slightly better example. You can see this pocket here. This is in the transverse orientation and you'll be able to see my needle coming in on this side. I have a little better visualization here because I have um, a 20 gauge spinal needle. So it's a little bit easier to see and a little bit easier to manipulate. You can see here I'm approaching that fluid pocket. And just as I enter there, you can see here, there's a, a bit of a height of that fluid. And as I aspirate, you can see the height of that fluid actually diminish as I remove more of that knee effusion. Now, one thing I want to mention is that when you place your transducer on the suprapatellar recess, and you're coming at it laterally here, what you want to make sure is that sometimes where you have your transducer and where you're actually doing your initial puncture into the skin are not going to be close. So what you do is you just move your transducer out laterally, find the needle, and then kind of guide it back towards the space. And that's what I'm doing here. So this right here is the needle tip right here is that bevel and you can see really no fluid anywhere like where am I going but what happened here is I actually moved my transducer laterally to kind of find my needle and guide it to the pocket and you'll see here my needle is going to advance and I'm going to move my transducer from a lateral to medial orientation and then I'm just guiding it to this fluid pocket right here to aspirate this knee effusion here for suspicion of septic joint. So there I'm getting into that joint space and able to aspirate. 
The previous slides were more focused on aspiration, but it's the same technique with injection. You identify that suprapatellar space and then turn your probe into the transverse orientation and inject. Here are a couple of examples. Shout out to Jerry Hizen, a family practice and sports medicine doctor who works in the same hospital I do, Temecula Valley Hospital. You can see the needle coming in in the transverse orientation relative to the leg itself. The needle is of course in the long axis. And then over here, we see a similar technique using a smaller needle. This is probably a 25 gauge um, approaching the suprapatellar recess right here for injection. That's it for this five minute Sono video. Please feel free to send me a tweet or an email. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.